December 10th. We've had snow today, a nice brisk day. And all the way from the sewer treatment plant, it's Mike Anderson with number one. Talk to us, Mike. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, I've got a couple of different items to present to you this evening. Broke, uh, I need a surplus. The wastewater department needs to surplus um, some equipment that's uh, broken down into two separate items. So we'll go over the first because they're two very distinct uh, sets of equipment. So I thought it easier to kind of separate it. So if you don't mind, I'd like to, to uh, go over the first bit, which was for us to surplus general office equipment. Um, and we've got, this is exciting, six hanging planning, plan racks. Back in the day when you used to have these large sets of plans, you needed a place to put them. So we would hang them here. Uh, all these plans we still, could, still do currently have, uh, just an electronic format, which is an acceptable format to have and takes up much less room. So on the left there are those six hanging plan racks. Uh, we also have a radio base station, which I think is pretty cool, but unfortunately not very useful for us. <laughs> but totally need to uh, uh, call in car, uh, car 41 or what have you. Um, and lastly, just a standard uh, uh, printer, HP DeskJet printer. Um, uh, all these items have been offered to various departments. Unfortunately, nobody else really seems to have much use for them either. Uh, we were able to get rid of some of our other items, cameras and things like that, that the fire department, I, I think, wanted. But nobody's even using, like, we thought maybe they'd be a good candidate for that base station. But unfortunately, nobody really needs it. So we thought perhaps uh, Habitat for Humanity might be able to take it and make, have some use for it or maybe sell it. And maybe they can get some money out of it. Nice. Any questions? No, I, I was just curious about the connection, but I imagine with their, you know, with their building program, maybe that would still come in handy, but um, I guess as long as they have to come and pick it up and it gets out of here, then that's good. I'd rather not throw it in the trash, honestly, but I mean, <laughs> exactly. uh, you know, <laughs> yep. if we can find a taker, that's great, so. Yep, good. Jake? Mm -mm. I'll look for a motion, please. I'd make a motion that council designate the listed property as surplus and authorized the and authorize the wastewater utility to donate the property to Habitat for Humanity. Second. Been moved and seconded. Other thoughts, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks, Mike. That's number one. Consent, please. <clears throat> Some yeah. more stuff. Yeah, now uh, the other batch. These are surplus items from our phase one tertiary treatment. Um, so this was, if you'll recall, when we uh, have been implementing this new treatment process, we did it in stages. We are now currently running all of our flow through this tertiary treatment process, but we weren't sure this process was going to work. So first we started off with um, 50,000 gallons and trying several different processes and seeing which one worked out best. Um, once we narrowed it down to one process, we ran a million gallons through it. Okay, that worked at 50,000 gallons. Is it going to work in the real world? So we ran a million gallons through it, and it uh, did work. Now we're running all of our flow through it. So what we have here is three submersible pumps and four centrifugal pumps. Uh, those three submersible pumps, for example, were capable of delivering one million gallons. Unfortunately, they don't handle 5 million gallons. We needed to upsize those pumps. Um, and it's a similar situation with those centrifugal pumps. Uh, we just, they just don't handle the capacity that we currently have. We did uh, have some foresight as much as we possibly could. Uh, for example, those submersible pumps, um, there's a, uh, what's called a VFD controller. So these are the electronics behind it that allow the pump to ramp up and ramp down and that sort of a thing. We were able to assume that we were probably going to upsize those submersible pumps shortly in the future when we purchased them. So we bought a VFD that was capable of doing that. So we did reuse that VFD. We reused as much equipment as possible, but some things, pumps mostly, have these certain curves and they only work within that curve. You know, at such an RPM, they pump such a flow with such a discharge head and yada, yada, yada. So they just don't work in our current application. Uh, the other items that we have our uh, UV disinfection system, similarly, um, so that treats the, it's pretty cool, um, it treats the uh, viruses and the bacteria by literally ripping open their DNA. 
Uh, so it actually doesn't kill them, but keeps them from making other little viruses and things like that by ripping open their DNA. Yeah. That little guy can only treat 50,000 gallons, though. Again, it was a trial to see if it would work. Um, our new unit handles 1 million gallons that we use. We use it for our process water and things like that. Um, and on the right-hand side there, we've got blowers, and it was a similar situation. Uh, those blowers are used to provide air for the bugs and things like that so they can breathe that are part of the process. When we were only treating a million gallons a day, they needed so much air. At five million gallons a day, they need more air than those blowers were capable of handling. Um, and at the time, because of going back to those pump curves, it's similar. It it's, works the same whether you're pumping water or air. It works fairly similar. Because I had asked the question, well, why didn't we just turn get a bigger blower and turn it down from five million gallons down to a million gallons worth of air? But well, you just couldn't. You, you're off the pump curve or the blower curve in this case. So we weren't able to utilize this equipment um, in our in our current setup. Questions? Just here. Go ahead. Well, it sounds like there's probably a pretty limited niche market for <laughs> this kind of used stuff. But at the same time, I would guess to somebody it's got some real value. Do you have even a rough guesstimate of what we might see out of it? Does it go to auction, or what do you do? Well, that's the thing. Uh, Pound we, for metal? Or <laughs> well, I don't want to do that. And that's why I separated these two items, because, again, I, and I, 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 I would request that we... You, you grant us the ability to dispose of these and I, I put a commercially commercially reasonable manner and that sure. is hopefully leaving the door open to allow us to put it up for a bid because I'm thinking possibly a uh, uh, an auction site one of these online auction sites not a local auction like uh, that may that may happen around here because who needs a 50,000 <laughs> gallon a day UV disinfection system it's pretty niche like you said so uh, I'd like to uh, get it out to the regionally or even nationally because um, it does have a lot of value that's an expensive piece of equipment it's a about a hundred thousand dollar UV disinfection system so somebody is not going to pick it up for a hundred thousand dollars but they can get a fantastic deal and maybe we can get some money in return for it more than we would you know scrap value or something like that because there is there is value to it to the right person Thanks, Mike. That was kind of my question, too, is what, what are the sidebars on a commercially, commercially reasonable manner? And is that within the statutes of surplusing something that we can go out and try to make some money to, and that funds go back into the wastewater utility? That, would, that, be, that, would, that would be the idea, right? And, of course, they're, you know, the auction site or what have you would have their associated fees and things like that. But I think we, it, it, it's an avenue that I'm thinking of to get a return on investment. Um, so as long as it stays within the wastewater fund, yes. then that's an applicable method to surplus the... Precisely. It would stay in, the, in, the, in that fund. And are there more pieces that were in the pilot project that might come up, or are, are you past the testing phase of that? No, we are past the testing phase, and of, quite think? honestly, for example, those pumps, they take up quite a bit of real estate, and it's a bay at, that we normally keep things in that we can't keep things in. That's why I'm looking to get rid of it. Mm. And moving pieces of equipment like to move, so the longer they sit, the less valuable they become. The less, you know, so the quicker we can get rid of it, the better it is for the equipment. And we, obviously they're worth more money at this time. I have a question, Mike, um, regards to the pump. So they can pump a million gallons, so it's not something that you could give to the water department because it's been in the wastewater department? They're not the same? Well, yeah, certainly you wouldn't want to do that. Okay, no, just That's checking. definitely a cross-contamination thing. Ask. I don't think... No. So, and it can't be something we can throw in the lake and water our lawns and our parks with? Well, and you couldn't do that either. You, wouldn't, you, would, you would not be able to do that either. Um, those are sort of three separate trains. It's wastewater, water, and then irrigation water. Okay. Have to rem if it's specifically irrigation water, it has to remain. Okay. Separate, um, if it's non-potable, like lake water, for example. Okay. Um, however, uh, the, the other possible application, again, that I had thought of is we do have uh, 10 lift stations throughout the collection system. It's just sized wrong. It just doesn't work. Like I was telling you, you know, how high do you have to push this water up? How much flow do you have to move? Gotcha. It just doesn't work within any of our applications. 
So these things aren't really used up by any means, are they? No, exactly. Not, not, there's a lot of life left in them. So um, if we could get it out to somebody else in the country, preferably somebody nearby, it'd be nice if we get somebody in Idaho that uh, uh, could use these things. And maybe if, if a small city or a small town is strapped for cash, there's a lot of service life left here. So that's, those are the areas that nice. we will, uh, are hoping are commercially, commercially reasonable that we can do, get rid of these. Right. Well, I appreciate you checked other local applications for them. So right. <laughs> that was, that, that's uh, very uh, responsible, so thanks. My pleasure. The other questions, I'll look for a motion. I'd be happy to make a motion that the council designate the listed property as surplus and authorize the wastewater utility to dispose of the equipment in a commercially reasonable manner. Second. A commercially reasonable manner. We like that. <laughs> Mike, we like that. Uh, all, all hearing no other part. questions, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, Mike. Good job. Thank you. Consent, please. And next up, our city engineer. Chris, welcome to town. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm here before you this afternoon to ask you to approve a memorandum of understanding between the City of Coeur d'Alene and Coeur d'Alene Charter Academy. And this has to do with their parent pickup and drop off. And if you, you can see kind of on the uh, map I put together here, these orange arrows going around here, this shows that Duncan Drive is a one-way street through here. And what happens is that cars coming and going on Building Center Drive during those pickup and drop off times, it's so busy that cars can't get out of Duncan Drive very easily. And so parents typically do not follow the rules um, that Coeur d'Alene Charter has given them as far as they are supposed to go around Building Center Drive, down Duncan Drive, and then drop off here and then leave again. But because of that difficulty, a lot of parents drop off along Building Center Drive and then continue on or pull a U-turn or pull into somebody's driveway to turn around and the businesses around there don't like it and the school has been struggling with, with it for some time. So I met with them uh, about a month or a month and a half ago to talk about this and they brought forth the idea of, well, could we hire a traffic control company or individuals to control that intersection of Building Center Drive and Duncan Drive. And so looking into that, it is something that we thought we could do on a kind of a pilot project basis. And what I'm proposing is that we give them a month um, to try it out and they would station a traffic controller here to operate traffic to allow these people to leave while holding traffic in the other directions. Um, we're giving them a month just to see if that really works out or if we see any potential dangers with that, at which time we can cancel the MOU and, and think about some other way that they could manage traffic there. So with that, I would stand for any questions. That's wild. Geek. Uh, Thank you. Um, yeah, Chris and I had a, a little chat about this. I, I know my son went to charter and it's been a problem for a long time there and as it gets busier and busier on Kathleen and, and the school is more successful, I think it'll continue. Um, with traffic kind of being a hot topic lately though, um, what I wondered is, if, are we setting a precedent? Has this been done with any other schools? And, and let's um, think that through a little bit um, because you know, with doing this with charter, are we opening this up to say other schools who may want to control traffic on, on public streets? You know, how, are, how has that been talked about? And what about the legal liability of something occurring on the street um, during, under an MOU process that we're just testing it? How, how are we, um, on, what kind of work have we done there? So I've met with our deputy city attorney, Randy Adams, about this, about those two very questions to get his uh, input on it as well. And as far as precedent goes, um, it's really context 
sensitive, context-based as far as whether this applies to any other schools at all. I mean, certainly if the intersection that they were wanting to control was Building Center Drive and Kathleen, it would be a, a, a no deal there because we can't have that problem. Even this one itself, it was close enough to Kathleen to give me some hesitation, but that's why I think maybe a month would be okay. But if any other schools did want to do this, it, we'd have to take a hard look at it. It doesn't mean that just because Charter got away with it, others could do it. It really depends on what the streets are like around it. And honestly, most schools probably aren't going to choose to hire a traffic control agency to control traffic for them um, because it is an expense to the school. Um, as far as liability goes, we aren't any more liable than if it was a construction company having their own traffic control operations going on out there. We're not advising them on what to do out there. Um, we're just allowing them to, so we're not assuming liability. If we told them exactly how to do it and something happened, it might be a different story, but in this case, um, we're just sitting back and watching and seeing if, if any red flags come up. If they do, then we can call an end to the to the pilot project. Great. So this is not a crossing guard who's going to just be a volunteer. They're actually going to implement Correct. a professional traffic They control. currently have a, vo a crossing guard at that location, but, um, but he doesn't, I mean, they only stop cars when somebody is trying to cross right okay. there. Um, to, to take it a step further like they're wanting to do, they're going to need someone who's trained in to, to stop traffic to let traffic in and out good well i hope that's a successful program for them and it solves an ongoing problem i hope but so too <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon um well i would just say i appreciate you know getting creative on it and actually if it does set a precedent that it's not like all precedents are bad, it might be a good mm -hmm. thing. I would hope that in any case where we've got a unique situation and kind of student safety, at, you know, um, again with the sideboards around it, giving it a try, is one of the, and I don't, don't know if you can answer this, but is one of the ultimate outcomes that they might decide, well, gee, it, it warrants putting a light there or something, or is that... Um, um, in I, the cards or what? I don't think that has ever, well, n that has never been discussed with me as far as putting a light there. They have discussed putting a stop controlled intersection there, but we're not ready to go there because of its proximity to Kathleen Avenue and the potential of it just backing up traffic onto that, uh, onto Kathleen. Right. Um, I know that Charter has talked about the possibility of vacating Duncan Drive to them at some point. If they could get everyone in agreement, all property owners around it, then they could fully take control of what happens on Duncan Drive. But at this point, it's a city street, and they're just trying to work within those parameters. Good. Good. Amazing. Amazing. Well, hearing nothing else, I look for a council motion. I would make a motion that Council approve the Memorandum of Understanding with Coeur d'Alene Charter Academy to allow the school to perform traffic control on a trial basis. Second. Moved and second. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Hearing none. We're good. Thanks. Thank you. Put that on consent. We're good, you guys. You don't want to hear about it again? <laughs> Put him on the hot spot? You know? I think it's pretty straightforward. All right. I move hear a motion to adjourn. And we'll be so out moved. Here. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we over and out. Have a nice Christmas if we don't see you again. Merry Christmas. Thanks for being here. 421.